So welcome to the very next episode of Money and Medicine. Today we're going to talk about income protection, what it means, why do you need it, what the benefits is, uh, and the different type, types of products that you do get in the income protection space. If you haven't done so, go down to this page, subscribe to our channel so that we can share some valuable information with you going forward. So today we're going to discuss what is an income protection, why do you need an income protection, and the very important elements of a waiting period, a term of the benefit, and in-claim escalation. Income protection is the, probably the most important benefit that you need to get in place in the wealth protection phase, which is the first phase of the financial planning process that we discussed in the, the previous episode. So Stefan, um, please share with us what is an income protection and why do you need it? So very briefly, income protection covers your most important asset, which is you. Uh, we always ask this question, what would you consider your most important asset? We do get a lot of interesting questions. A lot of people refer to it as, as your primary property or maybe an investment, which is all important assets, I would agree. But your most important asset is your ability to earn. If I can use the analogy of a money machine, if you can see yourself as a machine printing a monthly salary, why would you not insure that machine? You would insure your car, uh, you would insure your cell phone. It's the first thing that you do when you buy something new. But yet when it gets to you and yourself, we tend to wonder, do we really need income protection? Um, why you need income protection? Well, if you, don't, if you don't have money, then basically you are in a problem. To protect that earning ability. To, to make sure that it doesn't matter what happens to you, you will be getting that income every single month. You've studied long, you've studied five, six years, depending at which institution you attended. Um, you've completed your internship or you're in the process of completing your internship and you've put in a lot of time in your career and you're now generating an income and we need to make sure that we protect that earning ability. Correct. Whether that is in the event of a sickness, whether that's in the event of a temporary or permanent disability, um, we need to put a measures in place to make sure that if that uncertain event or unfortunate event happens, you will be guaranteed to get that income and you will be able to pay that monthly bills. So let's quickly talk about waiting periods. Um, there's some variations on the waiting periods that you do get in the market. Um, the two main ones that we mainly deal with is a seven day waiting period and a 30 day waiting period. Uh, we normally recommend for, for self-employed individuals a seven day or a shorter day waiting period, which is the time frame that has to pass before you can claim. Why 30 day waiting period? Uh, the 30 day waiting period is very popular, Stefan between our employed, employed um, clients. Those are normally clients that form part of a company where they get paid their, in, their income irrespective of whether they see patients or don't see patients, they are guaranteed their income every month. Those are also the clients that are um, enjoying sick leave through a company where they can claim and put in a number of days sick leave if they are booked off that guarantees them to get their full income at the end of the month. Mm. But also on the, the aspect of the waiting period, we've seen it before that in the, the medical profession, uh, although you might be salaried employed, although you might currently work for the government, um, it's still important to be on a seven-day waiting period Great. because we don't know what the future holds in. Uh, you might now be employed by the government, but in the next couple of years, you might maybe make the decision to go private. Uh, and once you've gone private, then you are 100% generating your own income. Correct. You are generating an income through meeting with patients and consulting with patients. And in that instance, if something happens to you and you can't consult with that patient, whether it's a sickness and something simple, let's say you're going for a small procedure and you're booked off for a number of days, you won't be able to see patients and that's going to have a dramatic effect on your income at the end of that month. Some people take the decision to um, get a locum, to get their practice still going. But that locum needs to get paid. Mm. And if you aren't earning an income, how are you going to pay that locum? Although you're getting fees from mm. the locum. So you need to protect your income even on a seven day waiting period, even though you are currently in the government. So, so on that note, let's talk about that. So there's still business expenses if you are self-employed that is still going to occur. There's still business expenses that will be happening that you will still need to cover. You maybe have a receptionist that you need to pay. Correct. Green that you need to pay. Correct. So some of the products, especially in the lower waiting period, they also offer you the option to cover business expenses, uh, which is something that you can add once you go into the, into the self-employed space. So another thing that's very important to look at when you, when you look at income protection is the term of the policy. And in essence, what the term means is it's just 
till when will this policy pay out or till when is this policy valid? Uh, normally we recommend retirement, but what does retirement look like? These days people don't retire at 65 anymore. I've got personally a doctor, a guy, a guy that we just saw, he's still 71 and he's still practicing. Um, so term is something that you have to, to choose upon policy inception. And I recommend, in the, especially in the medical professional space, to go as long as possible. Some of the providers offer what they call a whole of life option that you can literally work up until the day you physically are not able to work anymore. 100%. I've seen that the importance of that waiting period, a whole of life waiting period in my, my, my own practice. Um, I currently have a client that is 74 years old, a neurologist at Brentus Clinic. He's still practicing and he doesn't have income protection anymore. And he said to me, Werner, if I can turn back time, that's the one thing that I would have done. I would have increased that to a whole of life. He said, because at a time when he applied for the benefit, he chose a, a, a age 60 waiting period, mm -hmm. uh, purely because of affordability. Uh, because at that time, the, the, the shorter waiting period was a bit more affordable for him. But now he's sitting with an instance where he's still practicing. He's got a receptionist. He's got staff working for him. He's got rent to pay. And he's at a stage in his life where basically he's fragile or he's exposed. He's, 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 exposed. he's, he's high risk. So if something were to happen to him anymore at a moment, um, he won't be able to cover his income. He won't be guaranteed an income. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's very concerned of how he's going to pay all these people. Um, there's a big risk for him that he might have to close his practice mm -hmm. at that stage. Yeah. And so let's talk about a claim. So in the event of a claim, there's always two phases of, a, of an income protection claim. There's a temporary disability or a sickness, which is normally the first two years of, any, of every claim. And then there's a more permanent incapacity or more severe condition, which is permanent of nature that will then pay out to the term which you've decided. So if you said term 65, that will then pay you out till the age of 65. But with that said, it's very important once you go into a claim to have an escalation of that claim event. Because if you earn, I'm just using an example, 30,000 Rand a month, Next year, 30,000 Rand is not going to be worth 30,000 Rand anymore due to inflation. The year after that, it's going to deteriorate. So it's very important for you, again, something that you have to decide upon policy inception, does that thing escalate with inflation over the years so that you can keep in line with the buying power of money? So in summary, when you sit down with your financial advisor and you consider to implement income protection, look at a waiting period between a seven day and a 30 day consider the term of the benefit and consider to put in an in-claim in escalation. All benefits that you have to change or product features that you have to decide upon policy inception. And we, we've just seen so many medical professionals start out as an intern and um, not knowing whether they want to stay within, call it a government position where sick leave benefits would be given or whether they go private where then a seven day waiting period might happen. Um, so yes, I would say we don't know what the future holds, so maybe look at those features when you start. Obviously, discuss that with, with somebody in a financial advice position. Thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Again, if you haven't done so, please go to the bottom of this page, subscribe, and also like the video if you really found this useful. Feel more than welcome to comment and also give us some, some information or a couple of questions or if there's any queries that you would like to talk about, we'd be glad to assist you and maybe elaborate on that in the topic. Thank you. Thank you.